I did a video back in December and in general I guess my experience of driving in Germany now I thought why not do a video before we leave uh, to go back to Germany uh, take this opportunity and show you guys what it is like driving in California Germany there is a lot involved a lot more involved comparatively to USA when someone gets their driver's license so this video is not about comparing the two just a couple of facts why <laughs> there is no comparison in Germany it costs about anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 euros which is roughly about 2,300 to 3,700 US dollars uh, to obtain a driver's license it could fluctuate a little bit higher could fluctuate a little bit lower but there is a lot involved you have to go uh, to driving school you have to uh, there's a theoretical class and I believe there is a first aid class as well that I heard that you have to attend for about eight hours which I'm not sure so any of this information if it's incorrect please correct me in the comments because I always love to learn more because eventually I will have to get my my uh, driver's license in Germany as well German drivers are are very strategic and everyone follows the same rules whereas here in USA I find that it's just a mixed bag and it's just a recipe for disaster a couple of things before we get on the road I just wanted to mention just as information purposes that only 18% of the US population can drive a stick shift or a standard car um, I thought the number would be actually a little bit higher but it's not it's 18% I don't know what the number would be in Germany I assume it's probably a hundred percent but if not it's going to be close to that when I learned to drive I learned to drive the stick because my dad was adamant that uh, that us kids should learn how to drive a standard car before we start driving an automatic car but the first car that I owned after I got my driver's license was an automatic um, so I didn't drive stick for the longest time but then I think when I was in my late 20s that's when I switched over to driving a standard car and I absolutely loved it so without further ado let's go ahead and get started and let's get on the road I'm going to first trap my little buddy here is Romeo he's accompanying me so I'm gonna go ahead and strap him in so he's nice and safe and then we will get on the road and the first stop we're going to make is we need to pump gas and I'm going to show you guys what it is like to pump gas here I would say easily about 95% of the people here in California pay with a credit card and they have no interaction with anyone that is inside um, the gas station unless you need to go in to buy I don't know a piece of gum or drink or whatever I'm driving out can I just say that how beautiful today is it is absolutely gorgeous day and this is one of the reasons I love living in Palm Springs I do miss Germany when when we are here but when I'm in Germany I actually do miss Palm Springs as well and right now it is absolutely the perfect time to be here in Palm Springs because it is just enough hot that it is just hot enough not to the point where it's like burning hot but as soon as it gets burning hot then that's when we will be heading back to Germany okay so here we are I'm going to go ahead and pull in here and we're going to go ahead and pump gas pumping gas here in USA is a little bit different than in Germany the first thing you need to do here is swipe your credit card once you swipe your credit card it will ask you for uh, the zip code and once you punch in the zip code the pre-auth for the card is completed and then you can go ahead and select the type of, um, of gasoline that you need for your car so in my case I'm selecting uh, premium 
because that is what our car requires. The price for premium is $4.29 per gallon. Now to compare this to Germany, if I look at the price for their regular, it is at $3.99. And if we compare that to Germany, right now the current rate in Germany per gallon, if we translate it to USA, per gallon the price would be $6.76. So that is a pretty hefty difference. The freeways here have a speed limit and the speed limit is typically 75 miles per hour. Also the average freeway here uh, is about four to five lanes so they're fairly large. Also on a freeway here in US you can see that I'm able to take over slow vehicles from the right side which is a big no-no in Germany. Here in USA uh, the general rule actually is taking over from the left and the faster vehicles are supposed to be on the left but I don't know why that rule is not enforced and it really bugs me. Now that I'm used to driving in Germany, it really bugs me. The other thing is that here in USA on the freeways, we have a lot of HOV lanes, which are typically for two passengers or over. And in certain times it is three passengers and over. And some of those HOV lanes also turn into toll roads uh, in certain portions of the freeway. Now the other thing is roundabouts. So Germany comparatively doesn't have as much as other European countries, but it's still fairly a good amount. In California, it is extremely rare to see a roundabout, but here we have a roundabout and here it is. This roundabout, I kid you not, when they put this in, it was literally the worst decision because so many people have gotten into accidents within this roundabout. And it's not so much actually even the, the fault of the people, it's the way the round, this roundabout is built. There's no clear definition of two lanes. So it's like a two lane roundabout but they didn't make a distinction between the two lanes. So people get very confused as to which lane they're in and they just kind of like zoom out and almost crash into each other when they need to take an exit to their street. The other big difference that I see in USA is that there's so much verbiage on the street signs and signs on the freeway. Whereas in Germany, the signs are, I feel more universal. So they speak a universal language. They have more symbols rather than verbiage. It makes life so much easier. Whereas in USA, it's a lot of verbiage. And I think that it makes it very difficult because then you have to read everything rather than if there was a symbol and everyone knew what that symbol was, uh, that would be so much easier. And the other thing about the streets is that you are able to make a right turn on a red unless it's noted. For example here, this light is just turned red. The only thing I need to do is stop, make sure there is no traffic coming on the other side, then I can go ahead and make a right turn without waiting for it to turn green. The other thing that's worth mentioning is the placement of the street light. Now, in Germany, it is closer to or on the same side as where uh, you are, whereas in uh, USA, it's on the opposite further side from you um, is where the street light is. But it actually makes sense. So once you really think about it, it makes sense. Here in USA in general, definitely in California, the way the layout of the, of the streets is that it's just a grid. Whereas in Europe in general, that is not the case. In a lot of the older cities, it's not the case. You will come into inter intersections where there are uh, maybe just three roads or four or five, and they veer off into different directions. And I think that might be one of the reasons why the street lights is on closest to you, because that would make sense to me. 
the next point is the stop sign I don't see that many stop signs in Germany but here we have a lot of stop signs and if you come to a stop sign here the rule is whoever gets to the stop sign first that's the person that gets to go first whereas in Germany that is not the case and I used to get very confused in the beginning so I didn't actually drive in Germany for the first three years that I was there because I wanted to be very careful I knew that I didn't have all of the skill set because I didn't want to put any other person in danger because of me being arrogant and just wanting to drive on the Autobahn. The last point that I wanted to point out which is also worth mentioning is that there are a lot of cop cars here in in California. The gun culture here is so scary in my opinion in USA. Um, I absolutely have very strong opinions about this. There's absolutely no excuse to own a gun. Absolutely no excuse. I don't care if this is the culture of USA and this is the history of USA. Whatever it is, if it causes death, if it causes harm, it's strong. It needs to be changed. So regardless, um, when I see a cop car or anyone actually, they see a cop car now, people that I know, uh, it's now become fearful because you never know if you get pulled over if they mistake you for someone else or whatever the case is maybe the cop is having a bad day if he pulls out a gun I don't want to deal with this so yeah I've never had a, a bad experience with a cop but I have lost a lot of trust here in the justice system or the policing system here in California or in general in USA. That is my opinion. So guys, this is what I had for you today. I hope you guys enjoyed this ride with me. This is very different than the norm for me as far as the videos that I make. This is not philosophical. It's not about an issue. I just wanted to share this with you while we are here in USA. But thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.